What's up, good people? Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. It's been one of those days, you know, I've done driven about 150 miles and then laid tile and stuff. The uh, thing about laying tile for me is, you know, I, I have a hard time wearing gloves, and the cement just dries out your hands like crazy, and so they're a little bit dry and brittle and stuff like that and i'm tired because i've been doing a lot of driving i mean i've been doing like a 150 miles a day and busting ass and everything else and i'm tired from the cowboys and dealing with all of the drama that's going on here you know my good buddy daniel hernandez um sergeant master or master sergeant excuse me master sergeant um daniel called me today you know he's moved away and i'm i miss you know seeing him i was hoping he was gonna be able to go to the draft and stuff with us but he's just like man he's like i hate to call you bitching man he said i'm just tired man he said i'm just so tired of how everything is going with the cowboys this off season he said this is like the worst it's ever been and he's like you know for dak prescott he's like it's crazy. He said, I just wish that he would actually could just get away. I said, because he's just like, there, there's there's no, no, no matter what, he's in a no-win situation. The Joneses aren't doing shit to help him. You know, he's like, we're losing players left and right. You know, he said, you know, everybody gets in the playoffs and, you know, nobody's showing up and everything. And it's like, the, the Dak is the only one that gets cussed at. The, the only thing, he's like, he's one of the few things that we got good. And everybody just wants to get rid of him. And it's just like, yeah, I know. And so then later on today, good old Wade, you know, Walker Wade, what's up, my man? And he's been waffling from side to side and everything else. You know, we had the Joneses and Dak come to agreement about the contract. And everybody's just looking and saying, you know, we, we if it weren't for Dak Prescott, we wouldn't suck. Which is the craziest thing I've ever heard. So. Let me share with you guys. I hope, Wade, you don't mind me sharing this. Mark, I know you love Dak, but look, Cowboys Nation only cares about playoff success. That's all I care about. In 21 and 22, Dak had two great teams and healthy teams coming uh, playoff time in both games against San Francisco. Dak, our defense in both games, held them in check for most part. That is the situation you need to... That is a situation you need your quarterback to elevate his play to propel the team to victory, whether that be making throws and not making turnovers. Dak was unable to do it, Mark, and that's the fact. Mark, Cowboys, that's the facts, Mark, and we have to get a quarterback who elevates his team and plays in crunch time in playoffs, which means we have to go into quarterback purgatory to find that quarterback, and I'm ready. I said, no problem. The hell with them. When we have Zach Wilson's and uh, other bums, I said, I don't want to hear people complaining. I said, you know, literally, when we go through what Washington has been going through or the Jets have been going through for, you know, 50 years and things, you know, what, what the Bears have been going through, the Cleveland Browns, when we start going through that, I don't want to hear anybody complain about that. that that's literally what I said. He said, we could have bums. After Dak, you're right. Betting odds say we will struggle without Dak as a high probability. There's also the chance that we find the next great quarterback. Only way to find out is jump on the back and see what happens. You know, and, and what I hear is, you know, we could get Tom Brady. We could. Or Pat Mahomes. But how many of those guys have there been in the last 30 years? And so I want to go back, and and I'm so tired of going through this because, and and DMV is right. DMV on Twitter posted that some of y'all are coming after content creators like we're the ones making the decisions. And I'm not making any decisions. I have no control because if it had been up to me, we would have signed Calais Campbell you know, when he was a free agent from the Cardinals. If it was up to me and I had any power, we would have signed to Mario Davis when he became a free agent from the Jets. 
You know what I'm saying? If it had been up to me, we wouldn't have paid Zeke Elliott a running back. You don't pay a running back big money after four years of hard running. If it had been up to me, I would be doing a little bit more in free agency to build a team. If it had been up to me, I wouldn't have used a safety as a linebacker if it were up to me. See, these are things that we can all agree on, but we know that it doesn't matter. But I want to, wait because I, I get what you're saying, that we had great teams. Now, great teams are up for debate. We have had tragic flaws with our team. And in that San Francisco 49er game, the first one we played in 2022, um, I'm sorry, 2021, we lost 23-17. And I get it. When I go through the statistics, the thing that's kind of crazy is, you know, people will say, you know, well, we should have gotten Jimmy G. Well, Jimmy G, you're right. They, you kept Jimmy G in check. He only had 172 yards and an interception. Dak Prescott, 75 yards more with a TD pass. And the same interception. So the interceptions are washed. Dak actually played better than Jimmy G. The difference in this game, the difference in this game was San Francisco was able to control the clock because they ran the ball for 177 yards. They won the time of possession 36 to 27. And on the flip side here, as we're killing the quarterback, as we constantly just say, it's just that guy, why don't we try and fix some of the other things that are usually a little easier to fix? Running games, running backs, usually are easier to find than quarterbacks. Am I right about this? Because as we paid Zeke Elliott $90 million, $90 million contract. We're still paying $6 million this year. When we are going through and we're talking about Dak didn't perform in the biggest moments, why don't we ever say shit about the fucking running game? Because your bellwether back had 31 yards on 12 carries. 2.6 yards. 2.6. Your other back had four carries for 14 yards. The only one who actually had a decent average was your quarterback who had 27 of your 77 yards. Your two running backs in the biggest moment when they need to also step up like the quarterback does too, like the quarterback does, they got 40 yards. They got 44, so sorry, 45 yards. 45 yards. That's what they got. And when you're asking the quarterback solely in the playoffs to be the quarterback, the running back, and everything else, sorry. I can't put everything and just say, if we just go out here get rid of this guy and we just draft somebody else and we go through quarterback purgatory, we'll be fine. We'll be better in this situation because see, you're not looking at the root problem here to win in the Super Bowl. Take a look at the Eagles. Take a look at the 49ers. You can't look and say they've got lesser talent than what we have. They are stacked a lot higher than we are in multiple positions. Okay, let's take a look here again. Because, see, you all keep missing the problem with Dak Prescott. And as I talked about this morning with Tony Romo's best year, the year you want to talk about a season that we should have won the Super Bowl? 2014, our defense was number two at taking away the football. You had a running back who was rushing for 1,800 yards. Your quarterback had 34 TDs, I believe. With nine interceptions. That was the year that you had a more complete team. But again, we lost to freaking Green Bay. Okay? I just, just pointing that out. But as we go through in 2019, again, 
I'm not saying that Dak Prescott played a great game, but here's the problem. Again, you got Zeke Elliott as your bellwether back. 10 carries, 26 yards. His long was five yards. Your quarterback, four carries, 22 yards. Your second back, six carries, 22 yards. And once he got hurt, once Tony Pollard got hurt and was out, the only weapon you had was C.D. Lamb. As we're going through and killing the quarterback and saying, that guy sucks. Because he did throw two interceptions. He did throw two interceptions. When you are not a balanced team, when they look and they laugh at Zeke Elliott as your running back, in the same way Jordan Love laughed at us having a safety as a linebacker and said, we don't want to throw against that secondary because we'll probably have interceptions, but we can run the hell out of it against that that, that linebacker as a safety. We can do that. When you literally lost Tony Pollard, take a look at everybody else here because we're saying the quarterback, we're literally saying the quarterback, he's got to elevate above everything else. Dalton Schultz, five catches, 27 yards. Noah freaking Brown, two catches, 21 yards. T.Y. Hilton, what's T.Y. doing these days? That was one of your receivers. T.Y. Hilton, did he even play this past year? Okay, T.Y. Hilton, one catch, 15 yards. Tony Pollard, before he got hurt, two catches, 11 yards. Kayvon Turpin. So I'm going to ask this. How does this group, oh, and Michael Gallup, zero catches. How does this group right here compare to what the Eagles put out on the field for their receiving and running game? Dallas Goddard, A.J. Brown, Devontae Smith, you know, th- those guys? Do, 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 does this list of characters against San Francisco in any shape, way, or form compare to what you see with San Francisco? Debo Samuels, Brandon Ayuk, George Kittle, Christian McCaffrey? Seriously? George Kittle had 95 yards. Debo had 45 yards. Look at that. You didn't even have, you don't even have the firepower to match up with these guys. And your whole thing is just get rid of the quarterback. Get rid of the quarterback. It will be fine. I'm sorry. This is insanity. Wade, I'm sorry, bro. You can get rid of the quarterback, but I'm going to tell you, We've seen what it looks like with the Andy Daltons, with the Ben Dianucci's and everything else. The only good thing you got going on is the quarterback really going through there on these, bro. And back to that other one, you know, had Randy Gregory not tackled an offensive lineman and got a 15-yard penalty giving them a first down, maybe we would have had more time on the clock and a shorter field to try and get the go-ahead score. All these things are relative, bro. And as we watch, you know, Stefan Gilmore, you know, literally throw shade on the organization and basically tell you, you know, good front offices find a way to put talent on the field. The Rams won the Super Bowl, and we literally had Stephen Jones say, well, we don't believe that's the right way to to build a team. Stephen Jones, they just won the Super Bowl. They were at another Super Bowl just a few years before. What the hell have you done for 30 years? How do you have the right to even tell somebody else how to build a team when they just won a Super Bowl and you ain't done shit? And as we sit here and look in free agency and say, we're not even taking care of the basics. We're not even getting a running back. We're not trying to get an extra wide receiver that's a better target like other teams. We're not trying to get better defensive linemen. We're just letting ours go with no plan to replace them. And we have an owner that literally says, let's do more with less. Wade getting rid of Dak Prescott and saying, let's just try and draft another one is going to take more draft capital 
to get up there to take that guy, which is the only thing that we have to try and keep this team on life support, is trying to find the Micah Parsons, the C.D. Lambs. If you take those picks and try and move up to reach for a quarterback that you hope doesn't become Mac Jones, Zach Wilson, Josh Rosen, or any of these other bums, then you're not even going to have any talent to put around them because they certainly won't go out and get any free agents to add to it. I am so tired of this same stupid shit where nobody looks anywhere but the quarterback for issues. This team has a lot of issues. You cannot look at this team, which has had the same damn problem year after year after year of stopping the freaking run when you have to stop the freaking run in the playoffs. And you just keep saying quarterback, quarterback, quarterback. Yes, I am like Master Sergeant Daniel. At some point, I just wish Dak could get the hell out of here because this is like the movie Get Out. Because you come in here, you get shit on, and you leave without a ring. Just so tired, man. Just so tired of the shit. This is, this is killing me to even be here trying to talk and deal with this crap. I, I, I give up. Hope you all having a good thirsty Thursday. I got to go to the store and pick up some materials for tomorrow. And um, I'll catch you later.